What's the word, y'all? I ain't even, man. Bittersweet, right? Of course, I'm rooting for my guy, Chris Paul, to win a championship, and they are two games away from doing that. But as the, the basket, li li I always try to tell people, there's a hierarchy here, right? Above all, shut up, ESPN. Above all, I am a NBA fan. I am an NBA fan before I'm a Chris Paul fan, before I'm a... a uh, a Derrick Rose fan, even before I am a Bulls fan, I am an NBA slash basketball fan, right? So even though my favorite player of all time is just two games away from getting his first ring after 79, 79 years of playing, I'm not enjoying myself because the overall product of the finals so far haven't been good. One team is bringing what they supposed to, giving the fans something to watch. They're living up to their side of the bargain. It's the other. It's the other, man. Listen, I made a tweet earlier. And this is crazy that we have to it literally explain every part of a tweet. And I think most people understood. Devin Booker had a move where Jeff Teague did one of these. Like he was chasing his own tail. And I tweeted, Devin Booker showing his whole bag today or something like that. Go through my mentions, bro. Kenny, he's 3 for 12 right now. Kenny, he's 3 for 12 right now. Oh, he, what did he end, though? What did he end, though? And I'm not saying that he was hella efficient. What I'm saying that the buckets that he was getting were like showing his bag, showing his whole offensive repertoire. And guess what he did? He ended with 12 out of 25, seven made three. Anyway, one team is living up to the bar to, to their side of the bargain. Very early on, even though the Milwaukee Bucks had, I think at one point, like an eight, nine point lead in the first half, first quarter. I me and my guys, it's six of us sitting in the party. I was like, the Suns are gonna win this game. And you know why? Because if Mikael Bridges hit two threes in the first quarter, Jay Crowder hit a three in the first quarter, and Torrey Craig hit a three in the first quarter. If you did not know, this is a statistic. I think I heard on, on Zach Lowe's podcast. I tried to be given credit, but I might I might be wrong him. Before the finals even started, he said that when Jay Crowder scores over 10 points, they are undefeated in the playoffs. How many points he had tonight? 11. Streak lives on. So even though the Bucks had started the game off as the hotter team, I just knew if Mikel is going to hit his shots, if Jay's going to hit his shots, if Torrey Craig is going to hit his shots, and Cam Johnson gave two threes, it's over with, right? Um, so let's talk about, well, first of all, Suns, congratulations. Another big time win. Mikel was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. He is making himself more money every time he plays. DeAndre Aiden didn't, wasn't the efficient monster that we normally see, but he played a crazy amount of minutes because Darius Sarge is not there. You don't really trust Frank Kaminsky, but he played and played well. Chris Paul had his moments where the, the the Bucks are going on the run and Chris Paul may quiet it a little bit. He was a little loose with that ball, a lot looser with that ball today than he has been in this entire playoff run. That's You can't do that, but luckily they got it there. And of course, like I said, Devin Booker had, had many, many moments in this one. But I'm disappointed. The Bucks ain't doing it, man. I I swear to God, if I, if I open my Twitter and I don't really follow people that be doing stuff like this, if I see any Giannis slander after today, it's, it's a wrap, bro. I, I'm sorry. I don't know how you can watch tonight's game and slander Giannis. This man gave his all on the offensive side of the ball, ended with 42 points. He shot 11 for 18 for three. I know it's only 62%, but for Giannis to shoot 62% on almost 20 free throws is amazing for your team. He had 42 points. He had 12 rebounds, four assists, and he showed defensive player of the year things today. The help defense was ridiculous. He ended with three blocks and a steal. The defense was amazing today. He gave it his all. All he was asking for, all he needed, was for one of his other two offensive-minded players to step up, and none of them did. We got, we got Chris Middleton, 5 for 16, 1 for 6 from 3, and didn't get to the line at all. You would think, hey, my mid-range contested three-pointers, all of that ain't working. Let me try to get to the basket a little bit. Let, let's see an easy one going. Let's go, draw some contact so I can get to the free throw line, right? Not one time, Chris. And if this series is going to be anything, we need Chris Middleton from game three la uh, last series. I think it was game three. We need Chris Middleton from game six. We need a quarter, Chris. Giannis needs a quarter. They had a little run. They had a little run in the fourth, but I think they got it all the way down to five. Giannis comes out because his ankle or something is messing up. He's taking off his shoes. The trainer's looking at him immediately. Three-pointer Suns and one Suns. Another basket. It's back up to over 10. 
He couldn't sit for a single minute. And I mentioned this yesterday on the last video, Giannis typically is not a guy that's going to give you 40 minutes. So the fact that he gave y'all 40 minutes of elite, elite best player on the court basketball and y'all still lost by 10 is ridiculous. You also got Drew Holiday, who y'all traded a lot for, you gave a bag to because he was supposed to be that third player. Eric Bledsoe had been disappointing for two playoff runs. Now you bring Drew in, and anytime Drew plays and, and Giannis are playing in the same game, Drew just can't do anything. I tweeted a, a, a video. This is this is fourth quarter. At this point, I think it's a seven-point game. Drew Holiday is on the left wing. He passes it to the corner. He gets it right back. Pump fake two times on the defender. T -t -t he was thinking way too much in this game. It looked like he was getting in his own head. I love Drew Holiday. I do believe that Drew Holiday is a very good NBA player. I'm not slandering Drew Holiday, but he needs to play better. Because today, again, as a basketball fan, above all, his performance and Chris's performance was infuriating when you think about what Giannis gave y'all and the fact that y'all didn't really even have a chance. They had their runs. Like I said, it was down to five at one point, but it never felt like they were actually in the game. Pat Connaughton, good performance. I mean, oh, his minus 14 was terrible. I don't know how much y'all care about plus minus or anything, but he gave you a little offensive spark, and it was bad. I even made a tweet. I had to go look this up because because I think it was my guy Snail Season. Shout out to Snail Season. I feel like I'm shouting him out on, like, every podcast, every episode. But, hey, um, well, I had tweeted something about Chris Middleton at one point had seven points, and P.J. Tucker also had seven points. And I'm like, bro, that's unacceptable. And I think snail season was like, it's way too much isolation. So I was like, yeah, it, it is way too much isolation. Let me go look up some st statistics. They are passing the ball less than any other team that has made it to the finals in the last 10 years. And probably longer, but I can only see statistics from the last 10 years. Because how who the heck is tracking the amount of passes being thrown? Somebody is. And it probably just started 10 years ago. The least amount of passes is heavy isolation where Chris Middleton is settling for a contested two, it is Giannis burling his way to the basket. Is that the word? Going straight to the basket and injuring people. <laughs> Literally injuring Tory Craig. Get well soon, Tory. That, like me and my guy are saying, there are three players in the league, at the minimum three. These are the top three guys you don't want to be in front of when they're running. LeBron, Giannis, Zion. I'm not trying to be in front of anybody. It could be Isaiah Thomas. I'm not trying to be in front of Isaiah Thomas because he's even big at the top. I'm not, but those are the top three guys. And uh, Torrey Grant, he stood in there. I think he even drew the charge too. So sacrificing his body for extra possession. I don't even know where I was going. I, I just can't believe through two games this team has disappointed that much. I'm not saying it's over. Like, again, I won't say it's over until it's actually over, bro. Unless, okay, it's over if next game uh, they lose. If they lose game three in home in Milwaukee, call it a wrap. Giannis, get well soon. Get get that knee well. But it ain't looking good. Let's address some of the stuff that happened in this game early on. Um, because cause the weird thing about um, NBA fandom, I guess, is that when you announce that you are a diehard fan of a person or a team, anything that person or team do, they own your back about it. And earlier in this game, Chris Paul had a terrible play, terrible play on Giannis, right? And people are coming at me like, Kenny, this is your boy. This is what he's doing. He is, yes, he is still my boy. But if you watch any video I talk about Chris Paul, when he does this extra, trying to get under your skin, flopping, trying to get the extra calls, that is the worst part about Chris Paul's game. And I hate it. But all the good things kind of outweigh that in my personal opinion. That's why he's still my favorite. But like, no, there's, there's no... I said the same thing about Patrick Beverly. When Patrick Beverly did the Chris Paul push, there's no world for that to be acceptable. Whether you're my favorite player or my least favorite player. Things like that should not be acceptable, Chris. Um, and luckily, Giannis was okay. He was okay. But those things cannot happen on the basketball court. Because I know you want that ring, big fella. I know I know you do. But don't you also want to beat the team at their absolute best? Imagine, hypothetically, if Giannis goes down, you can't play no more. They already seeing you getting a fake ring. You can't make it even worse for yourself. Even though I, I highly doubt they give a damn about what the um, random burner account on Twitter is saying about fake rings. Nobody cares. A ring is a ring, especially when you're when you're playing so well. Game three. Um, we got a couple days in between game two and game three. Actually, I think it's like to Thursday. Um, or no, next Wednesday, I think the actual game. Yep, next Wednesday. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I said I wanted to be there for game number four. It was on Sunday or Saturday or whatever. It ain't happening. I know. Sad. 
sad. Something came up, and I also don't want to spend three thousand dollars on two tickets. That's that's also it. I would it would be kind of bad though if it was a sun sweep, and I could have been in the arena for game four to see it happen. Memories are priceless, is what I, I definitely heard somebody say. But you're not the one spending the three thousand dollars. It would be me. So they 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 have a price on them. <laughs> There's a limit. Now, if this was my team, if it was the Bulls, hell yeah, I'm paying the three. I'm paying more. I want to be court sad when this happened. But it's not my team. It's a team I mess with. I'm not a Suns fan. If Chris Paul left for free agency, I would still enjoy watching the Suns. But I'm not rooting for the Suns anymore. It's Chris, it's, it's Chris Paul, so you know what I'm saying? I got players on that team that I mess with. Mikael Bridges is the homie. Devin Booker is not the homie, but it's cool. But if Chris Paul left, they would just be another one of those teams I enjoy watching, but not really rooting for or against. Um, there's a tweet from Kevin Durant that I I, I, t I threw in my own DMs because I figured it would come relevant eventually. It's, it's something along the lines of like, NBA fans don't even know what NBA fans want. And I, I understand that. I understood it then, but I understand them more, right? Obviously... We've mentioned it a thousand times. These two teams will not be here if it wasn't for injuries. But on the same tip, us NBA fans have always said, bro, we want a little bit of parity. And it's unfortunate that it happened due to injury. I'm saying that. We want a little bit of parity. We're tired of seeing the same teams. But now we see something a little bit different. And may, hey, you, you have the opportunity or you have the freedom to change your opinion. Maybe you're like, man, I actually miss seeing LeBron in the finals, which is cool. It's just cool. But NBA fans are weird, bro. We got two teams who's never been there before, both trying to win it all, and everybody's just talking about how bad it is. And listen, the product ain't great, but I think it's still okay for the league to see two teams who ain't been there before fight it out. The statistics of game number one came out, and some of them were good, some of them were bad. But what I always want to tell people is, like, looking at the overall viewing numbers of an NBA game – don't really showcase the, the engagement of it because I know of plenty of casual NBA fans that are keeping up with the finals, but they're watching a 10-minute recap. You know what I'm saying? So just sitting down and watching it on TV ain't for everybody, especially in 2021 where, where Vine hit was a half a, a decade ago, had people swing uh, uh, attention span at six seconds. TikTok got it at a minute. I, I watched a three-minute TikTok today, and the whole comment section was like, why is this so long? It was a very interesting piece about some birds. How did I end up on bird TikTok? I don't know. It was an interesting video. But all the comments were just like, this video is too long. I don't understand it. I've been seeing the exact opposite. You're watching this video. We're 13 minutes in. I'm not even talking about basketball anymore. I'm talking about a bird video I saw on TikTok. So you are the, you're the viewer base that's actually watching the game, but everybody's not there. But they still keep up with the league. Like, I don't, I honestly don't know. If my dad is watching every minute of every NBA game, but he's definitely keeping up with it, whether it be watching my podcast, watching these updates, he's 100% keeping up with it, but I don't know if he's sitting there watching the full 48. Either way, um, I hope game three is a lot better. It better be a lot better. I'm going to be upset, Milwaukee. This was the A. A, Milwaukee. I'm sorry. I'm going back to this Giannis thing real quick. This was the game where you look up to the gods and you say, thank you for letting or making Giannis sign that extension this offseason. Because him putting up 42 and losing in the finals is the is the moment that LeBron had in, in Cleveland, where he's like, you know what? <laughs> I can't do this no more, dog. You got lucky. You lucked out. Because he probably rethinking that extension right now. I'm giving this city my all. And I ain't got one motherfucker. One dude other than Pat Connaughton. White man can't jump Pat Connaughton? Not the, the two people, the three people. It's three now because I'm counting you, Brooke. Don't think you're getting off easily. The three people who've been an all-star in the past. None of y'all want to do nothing? It's insane. Okay. I have another channel. I have a baseball channel. I'll put that link in the description if you're interested in baseball. I highly doubt that there's overlap here, but I ain't uploaded the video yet. It will be tomorrow. Um, what is Dwayne Wade doing? At, why is Dwayne Wade at every game? Devin Booker daps up Dwayne Wade. He's just got that, that private jet money. That's what it really is. 
when you have a pri when you have a private jet, you can just go anywhere. What a life. I wasn't blessed with six three size and crazy athleticism. Um, all right, that's too much stalking. <laughs>